Bushcraft 412, and here's a review on the Gerber Remix. This knife right here I got as a Christmas gift from someone who basically had no clue about knives and just went out and bought this thing on kind of looks alone, you know, looks and price. And uh, at first when I got it, I was kind of like, ah, thanks, you know, <laughs> kind of wasn't really into this knife. And uh, I've been carrying it for a couple of days now, and actually I've gotten uh, a little bit into this knife. Um, I'm actually uh, quite impressed with it. Um, not in the price range. This is, I think, you know, for the price range, there's a lot better knives out there. Um, I think if, if uh, Gerber were to get this down in the $15 to $20 range, this would be a much better seller. Uh, but in the $20 to $25 range, this knife is, is outclassed by a lot, of other, uh, a lot of other knives on the market. Uh, but nonetheless, it was a gift. I didn't pay for it. Um, so I want to go over just a couple things. Number one, it's a Gerber. So it is the standard Gerber stainless steel. Um, Chinese made stainless steel. A lot of people complain about it. I've never had a problem with it. I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of it, but it's it's okay. It gets, it gets the job done. I never had it fail on me. Um, it's got the standard titanium coating that comes on all the Gerbers, which is you know pretty good compared to a lot of the other companies out there's coatings. Um, and this knife, well, let's let's just get down to it. This knife is just kind of an unusual, weird, quirky design. Um, what you got is you got. A nice little thumb hole on this thing. And it's actually quite comfortable. You know, when you hold it, it's actually comfortable. And there's a little bit of jimping on the back of the blade. So when you're holding it, you have, you know, you can really, you know, I can't decide whether this knife was meant to be for utility or for self-defense. Um, as a self-defense knife, it's not very good. Uh, but, cause I, but I sit there and I feel like this has really got a nice grip to it. You know, when you hold it like this. So, I mean, it's almost, I mean, if with a little more design, this thing could have been a decent self-defense knife. I mean, not that it couldn't be used for that. You know, it definitely could, but, you know, this thing I feel was just like kind of a hair away from being really good. Um, you know, I think if they thinned it up and put a slightly longer blade, um, this could have been something that really could have, you know... Um, really done something. It's a nice drop point blade with a bit of a bevel so the full thickness of the blade only runs about halfway. Um, fairly thick to start and thins out fairly quick. Um, not the sharpest Gerber I've ever got out of the box to be honest. I did have to sharpen this one up to get it to shave hair. Um, the bevel's okay. Not the greatest. Um, the blade's pretty thin on the cutting edge which is why I think it it wasn't very sharp um, so I think the angle just wasn't optimal for, to, for a good cutting angle um, handle is skeletonized which is nice because you can wash it clean it do whatever tip up carry there's a big bonus there because um, you don't have this uh, big hole sticking out of your pocket um, the only thing that sticks out and it's a very deep carry too which I like um, you only have the tiniest little bit sticking out of your pocket, which is really not bad, you know. And the, and the clip is uh, metal, skeletonized metal, very good in the pocket. Then it fits in the pocket, very good. I'm, I'm actually impressed with with how it fits in the pocket. Um, it's thin enough, so it's not too bulky uh, when folded. Uh, liner lock. Um, we'll get into the liner lock in a second. So. Let me, we'll set this down. We will pull out the little baby Enlon for comparison purposes. And as you can see, size wise, uh, the Enlon is slightly smaller than a Spyderco Tenacious. So as you can see there, this is comparable in size to a Tenacious. Um, biggest complaint, and this is where this knife, if it's ever going to be successful, needs to be fixed, is number one, you can't open it with a flick. You know, it really takes a, an effort to open it, because there is a thumb stud. Thumb stud's okay, but uh, there's really no place to grip the knife, and you can't, you know, 
it's too tight you know you can't flick it open anyway and there's no way to adjust it that at least that I can see there's no pivot pin in this design so it looks like the how it comes is how it comes there's no adjusting it and if I'm wrong someone please correct me but I can't find any way to to adjust this to uh, make it a little looser uh, and plus two the liner knocks really thin um, and of course because it's been thin I've been trying to make it fail I've been pushing on it you know and hitting it and trying to make this thing fail because I'm worried about it because it's so thin it hasn't failed me yet which is good news um, but how this thing works I wish I could show you maybe we'll try and see if this shows up on the camera right there we go Now, as you can see, hopefully, there's a bit of a flat part. As you can see, the little edges of the flat part as I move it. There is a, uh, there, it catches the light good there. There's a flat section on the blade on the bottom. And as it opens, that flat section allows the liner lock to come out. But as you can hear, there's no, the click is pretty wimpy. I don't know a lot of like snap into place. This knife doesn't really snap into place like a lot of them do. So you don't get that positive reinforcement that it's open. So every time I open it, I find myself kind of, oh, is it open? Is it locked? You know, just double checking because it's so quiet. And, it, you know, it really doesn't go over very far. So it's kind of a critique because I'm really worried about it. Hasn't failed me yet, but it does worry me. Um, I think this knife, in its price range, is outclassed horribly. I mean, it's just horribly outclassed. It's, you know, 25 bucks. There are a lot better knives you can get for 25 bucks. Plain and simple. Um, I think it's not, definitely not a bad knife to own at all. Um, the grip, like I said, the grip on it's great. And not only that, but as a knife to use in a bushcraft situation, to have this thumb hole so you can really, you know, choke up on the blade when you're doing some woodworking, um, is actually a very good idea. Um, a lot of control on the blade. And that's what makes it such a nice knife is that control you have when you're holding it. You, know, you can, you got your thumb, you know, jumping up there and you can put that finger right in. This is a knife you don't have to worry about flying out of your hand. Or even have to rely, you know, there is a lanyard hold as well. I forgot to mention in the back here. You don't have to rely on the lanyard hold. You know, you can... Do that and then you know it does allow for some other grips as well I guess if you want to try and use this as self-defense you know you can you know do some interesting stuff with the grip but I don't think this is meant for self-defense nor would I really want to use it for that but very good grip for just you know delicate work choking up on the blade very nice I just I'd like to see this knife with a better locking system, a little bit longer and thinner of a blade, little you know, a little on the you know, like a kind of thinner, longer side, and then a better lock up on it. And in that price range, where I think if you could sell this for eighteen ninety nine, seventeen ninety nine in that price range, this could be a real winner. Um, but it's not at twenty four. It's really outclassed. It really is. There's, just so many good knives out there for 25 bucks but this one a lot of promise in this and I think if you got 25 bucks and you're just looking for an interesting you know unusual knife you're not gonna go wrong with this one right here um, this is something I would definitely bring with me on um, I would bring this backpacking to be honest this is something backpacking and that the blades long enough where you can do some work with it plus you have enough control um really nice control really good blade control in this and and plus you know being a you know a drop point you know this is actually good for you know making nice cuts you could probably even you know gut fish and small game with this no problem uh, i haven't done it yet but it definitely would do it so gerber you're halfway there on this one um i doubt it i have a feeling this will probably be a discontinued model shortly but you know, hey, if you got the money, check one of these out. They're not bad.